Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's video project is actually going to teach you a fancy fold that I'm calling the double point fold. Here's the card here and you're going to be able to see that it opens at the top as well as the bottom. Easy to create and designer paper can be used in a whole new way to create those beautiful points revealing a beautiful focal point. I'm going to be using the Petal Palette stamp set on this card. I'm going to teach you some watercolor techniques as well. Remember, if you're here from YouTube, you'll be able to find the link to the pictures for this project, as well as cutting dimensions and supplies over on my blog. Just click on the description bar below, and that link will navigate you right to that blog post, making it easy for you to find. Let's head over to the stamp table, and let's get started on today's project. You can get a good look at this card now. I don't know if you can see the shimmer or not on the camera from the Winkastella, but it is stunning. All right, so the points open up like this, and then it reveals the greeting on the inside. Wait till I show you how easy this is to put together. You'll find all the cutting dimensions for the project over on my blog. There is no full card base like you're used to, you know, a piece that you fold in half. This actually is going to end up getting mounted here, but we'll stamp our greeting there before we do so. Let's go ahead and let's work on the focal point first. So I've got a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I'm pulling out my basic black archival ink. We are using the stamp set called Petal Palette. Oh, I am in love with this. Not only are the images beautiful, but the greetings are really varied, giving you a lot of options. Now, this is also offered as a bundle. I'll be back next week showing you another card using this exact same suite of products. There are coordinating framelits that go with the stamp set, so there's no fussy cutting involved. I've pulled out the cluster of the roses, and I've got my basic black ink pad here, and I'm going to go ahead and just going to ink that up. I always like to check to make sure I don't have black around my edges. The other thing too about this stamp set is you may find that it stamps kind of variegated. I've had a couple people actually ask me, why isn't it solid? Why isn't it real vibrant all the way around? Well, it's not meant to be. It was actually intended for it to look watercolored or aged to coordinate with the designer paper that does the same thing. And I'll show you in a minute. Anytime you're using basic black ink, you're going to need to let it dry. It is a slow drying ink because of the archival quality. And especially before we move on to the next step where we're going to do some watercoloring on this Whisper White cardstock. Since this is not watercolor paper, we're going to need to be very careful not to oversaturate it. Otherwise, the paper will pill. So I'm going to give you some tips along the way. I'm going to be coloring in the roses using rose red. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to give it a squeeze. We created the ink pad so that they would be flexible on the bottom so that when you squeeze them, a residual pool of ink would be inside the lid. So I'm going to lay that off to the side. And I've got my aqua painter here. This just uses regular tap water inside the barrel. I always like to give it a little pinch to make sure it's not too, too wet, especially since I'm not using watercolor paper. So you can see I'm going to pick up ink from inside the lid. You never want to put your aqua painter directly inside the ink pad or your blender pen. That's a dye-based ink and you would not want to mix those, um, either the chemical from the blender pen or the water from the aqua painter. So I'm going to go ahead and water that down. And I am just actually going to come inside here and I am actually just dabbing color inside those areas. I'm not looking to actually shade this. I am looking for variegated color, very much like the stamp and the coordinated designer series paper. So you can see this doesn't require any skill whatsoever. Just going to use the damp portion of my aqua painter just to fill it in. And then I've got my last one here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse out my aqua painter. My stamp and scrub is just off camera, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze it so that the water will run through the bristles and clean off the tip. I'm going to give that another squeeze again because I'm going to change colors now and I'm going to use old olive ink for my leaves. Again, same thing. I'm squeezing it. I'm going to have a nice residual pool of ink inside the well here. You can see how strong this is. So do you see how I actually take this and I kind of pull it down here to water it down so that it's not too concentrated? And the exact same thing is what I'm going to be doing here on the leaves. Not looking to oversaturate the paper, but again, looking for a varied look of color by just dabbing color inside those areas. Same thing, we're gonna give it a squeeze over the stamp and scrub so water will run through the bristles so we can clean off the brush. 
I always like to make sure that the bristles come to a nice point before I cap it. There's nothing worse than having those stray hairs here at the bottom of your aqua painter. I'm going to lay this aside for right now and let that dry for just a minute. And I've got two pieces of designer series paper here. This is from the Petal Passion Designer Series paper. Oh, I'm loving this. Remember how we talked about the variegated images? Do you see how this actually looks worn compared to this side or even this piece? That is actually part of the style of the Designer Series paper. So I have cut these and I am going to score them to make this a little bit easier. So I've got my stamp and trimmer here and I'm going to bring up the light blade, which is for scoring. The dark blade would be for cutting. So I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to put my first piece in, I'm going to line it up at the one inch mark and then I'm going to just score and I'm going to do the exact same thing on this piece. Now this is on the four inch side, so this is on the longest side of the paper. I've brought in my Big Shot and I like to use my magnetic platform when I'm going to be using framelits. It helps to hold them in place. I've got one of the clear acrylic cutting mats on the bottom to protect it. I've got a scrap piece of basic black cardstock here and I'm going to be using the Lots of Labels Framelits. Oh, I love these. They're graduated sizes, which makes layering really a breeze. So I've pulled out one size here that I'm gonna die cut in black. And then we've got our image we just colored here. And I'm gonna use that with a little bit smaller framelit. So I've already checked to make sure that these nest well. I'm just gonna kind of center that on the paper. Looking to make sure it's going to cut because it cuts on the inside circumference, not the outside. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to cover it with another clear cutting mat and then all I'm going to do is crank those through. The great thing about dies that have different sizes or different shapes, you can actually cut them at the exact same time on the Big Shot, avoiding a second pass. Now that popping and cracking that you hear is normal. It's all part of the rollers that are inside here. So we've got this one here and then we've got our image here. I brought in my snail adhesive to adhere these together, so I'm going to add adhesive to the back side. You'll know your paper is dry when it doesn't appear wet through the reverse sides. You'll want to check that. And then I'm going to layer this one over this one. We're going to set that aside. Let's work on the designer paper that we scored. This is actually going to be my wrong side, so I'm actually going to fold this down. And I'm going to use my bone folder to get a nice crisp edge here, making sure my sides are aligned. Now this next part is really easy. You don't even have to measure. All I want you to do is take one corner and bend it down so that one straight edge of the designer paper meets the score line. All right, so let me show you that again. One corner is going to meet the square edge of the designer paper and we're going to create a point. We're going to go over those again. Now on this side we're going to do the same thing. You're going to come down. You want to make sure that your papers don't overlap because that'll make it too bulky. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to go over those to make sure that they're nice and flat. Now the same thing here. Here's our score line at the bottom. We're taking the corner and we are coming down so it's a triangle and I'm going to crease it here and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. They're meeting that score line. Okay, and then bone folder again to make sure that crease is nice and stiff. Next we've got the Whisper White cardstock piece. These actually just get mounted here. So we're going to tack these clothes first. I like to use adhesive. You can use glue dots if you'd like. So inside that triangle area, I'm going to place some adhesive here and I'm going to anchor that down. And because we've pre-scored it with our fingers and a bone folder, it's going to be really easy to see and it's going to be easy for us to make sure that it's realigned properly. And then we're going to make point that one down as well. We'll do the same thing now on this one. So we have our two pieces. Here's the piece of cardstock that we're going to attach them to and you can see that that one inch flap is actually going to hold it to the center of what's going to be our card. So it's going to go like this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add adhesive here and I'm actually going to be generous. I'm going to use two rows right across the bottom. Here's a tip, make sure that you don't come all the way up inside the crease because you want to make sure that you give a little bit of room for this little bit of depth of this cardstock. So I'm going to line this up the best I can and then I'm going to fold it over. 
Now you may have a little area like this that shows. Don't worry. Just take your paper snips and come up along the edge and just give that a little tiny haircut by using the edge of that white cardstock. By using the edge of that white cardstock as a guide, that's going to ensure that it'll be nice and straight. We're going to do the same thing now here at the bottom. So I've got a strip of adhesive here and another above it. And again, we're going to work this way, lining it up the best that we can. And then I'm going to press and then we've got our fold. So we've got our two points now. This is where the image is going to go. Now I know we haven't stamped the inside yet and we'll get to that in just a minute, but I want to make sure that my greeting is going to fall behind here. So what I'd like to do is I actually will take a pencil and you can make a very light tick mark if that's going to make you feel a little bit more comfortable. I know it did for me. So I'll make a little light mark here and a little light mark here just so I know within the parameters I need to stamp. And I know that's probably really difficult to see on camera, but just give yourself little tick marks that can be easily erased. Back to my basic black ink pad and from that exact same stamp set, I've pulled out the words, life is so much better with you in it. So I'm going to go ahead and ink those up and I'm going to stamp that here near the top. I've pulled out one of the floral images that are part of that stamp set and I'm going to ink that up and I'm going to actually stamp that underneath it and I'm going to turn it this way because I found it a little bit easier to fit. I'm looking to make sure I'm inside my parameters and it looks like I am. Lots of firm even pressure. Just like before you're going to need to let that sit and dry before we watercolor those flowers in. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to just lightly erase those pencil marks. They won't even be noticeable. Now I'll come back to the rose red ink pad and you can see there's still plenty of ink inside that lid from that first squeeze. Got my blender pen again, making sure it's not too wet. And these areas are really small. So I'm just going to kind of dab in some ink just like we did before. Going to hold it over my scrub and I'm going to rinse out the bristles. Going to give that a quick pinch to make sure it's not too wet. And I'm going back to the old olive ink so I can fill in those leaves. And then one more time I'll rinse it before I put it away. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and mount this to the base of the card. So I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to add adhesive all the way around the perimeter of this because I want to make sure that it's not going to lift. So I'm going to be a lot more generous than I normally am. And then I'm going to center that here on this panel. And then I'll flip and I'll rub from the back just in case there's ink on my hands. Now we'll go ahead and mount the image. I chose to put dimensionals here at the tip and I was quite generous because I wanted to make sure that it held well. So I'm going to see how I create a small pyramid of them together here. I'm going to take off that paper backing. And I am going to center this over the top, making sure that those dimensionals fall in this area here and not on the card on the inside. All right, so there you go. And you can see they're not visible from the back. My final step is going to be clear Wink of Stella. Is this required? Absolutely not. But I absolutely love that shimmer for this beautiful feminine card. So I'm going to just go ahead and brush this on. Wink of Stella has an alcohol base, so it dries very quickly. And you do not want to apply it over any wet images. It'll just absorb the color. All right, so I'll just recap that. This should be stored straight up and down in your stamp room so that it's ready to use the next time. And there we go. There is our card. So here's the one we created today. Here's the one I created before you joined me. I'm calling this the double point fold. I'm so glad that you joined me today, everyone. Remember to head over to my blog for the cutting dimensions, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.